I started sculpting when I was a teenager in wood, and I went and got a degree in biology. I graduated. I decided that I wanted to go back to my sculpture. I went back, and I've been a sculptor ever since. In 1986, two seminal events happened in my life. I met Dr. Jane Goodall, and I also went to Africa about a month and a half after that. Jane planted the seed. I was intrigued, and I had received a commission from her to sculpt a chimpanzee, so I went to zoos when I came back from Africa, researched chimps for almost two years before presenting her with two sculptures for her to choose from. She selected both. I first saw chimpanzees in the wild six years ago when I went to Uganda with Richard Wrangham. Dr. Richard Wrangham is a former student of Jane Goodall. He's now the head of a department at Harvard University. And he invited me to go to Africa, to Uganda. So I followed the chimps through the forest for six days. And it was a marvelous, enlightening experience. It was a bit like watching proto-human beings walking through the forest. I already knew their behaviors from having read all of Jane's books and watched, watching all of her tapes and watching chimpanzees in captivity for many years. So when I got there, it was like a dream come true. My preferred method of working varies depending on the subject and where I happen to be. If I'm in the field, working directly from life, making wax field studies is very rewarding. And then I know that I've got something tangibly closer to my subject than I could any other way. At other times, I sketch in charcoal and bring those back to the studio. Regardless, if I've been into the field and seen the animal in the wild, I use those studies not as something that I'm going to copy necessarily, but to fire my memory so that I can remember those days, weeks, or months I spent in the field and remember what the insects sounded like, what the rain sounded like, how the wind felt on my face or the sunlight on the back of my neck as I was observing my subjects. All these things add immeasurably to my experience in the studio and aid me in memory. The troupe was created as soon as I returned from Uganda, and there are six sculptures depicting eight chimpanzees. There's a mother and child playing, the mom's on her back, holding her baby up in the air. There's another mother walking with the small one on her back. There's an alpha male, a big hulking male who's calling, and there's a standing male. I thought I'd try something different, but all of them are moving. I've done quite a few seated chimpanzees prior to this, and I wanted to have this group animated. I did not want them to simply be sitting on the ground grooming or contemplating life as I had in previous sculptures. When I arrived on site at the Chattanooga Zoo, I realized immediately that the chimpanzees needed to be up in the air and they needed to have a place to set in rather than, and to move through rather than just plopping them on the ground. They simply would not take up enough space visually. So it was decided that we would go into the mountains around Tennessee and find boulders, bring them to the site, which has been done now, and the chimpanzees will be striding across these boulders. Hopefully it will look as though they're moving through a natural area and viewers will be able to suspend their disbelief and for a moment perhaps glimpse what it's like to walk with wild chimpanzees. In the troupe I tried to draw on the entire experience, not just one moment. I tried to synthesize as much of the experience as I could of being there in the forest, having them stream past me, that's what I wanted to depict. I wanted to place the viewer there in the forest of Uganda for a moment as they look at the sculpture. I've been influenced by Rodin 
virtually any realist sculptor. Another man named Rembrandt Bugatti, who worked in the very early 20th century, has been a major influence on my sculpture, the style of sculpture, the surface. I looked at his work and I saw life there. And I also saw loose slabs laid down or thumbprints deeply set into the piece. And I realized that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something more along the lines of French Impressionism or the California Impressionists. I couldn't do color in the same way, but I could handle surface in a similar way. So I began using my thumb on small pieces and leaving it rough. And on the larger works, such as the troupe, you can see where I've pushed the clay with my entire hand. I've used my palm much like a thumb. I've pushed the clay on and then I've left it that way. It keeps it fresh. It keeps the surface from being noodled. From, you know, I haven't gone in there and done a lot of tweaking. I've simply laid the slab on and that's it. I build the form that way. It's not something I do on the surface. What I do is I start from the beginning. I start from the metal armature. I lay on clay. And when I get to where the animal should be, I stop. My time spent in Africa has changed me utterly over the years. I've spent over a year of my life, year and a half of my life, in Africa, in the field, walking, driving, and experiencing life in the bush with the animals, living alongside them. There's something about being in the forest with chimpanzees that is subliminally wonderful. It makes you feel like there is some key to the way we might have lived and perhaps some aspects of living we might have forgotten that are good to study.